Hello and welcome. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. I am going to make a tier list of a bunch of Harry Potter characters, 39 to be exact. Now, I've never done a tier list, but I figured doing Harry Potter characters was a great place to start. I've made a lot of videos explaining the life of characters, but I rarely gave my own opinions on those characters. So today, I'm going to make this video less about facts and more about my own personal bias. Now, there are going to be some hot takes in this, and I'm excited to see your reactions to it. But regardless of what anyone says, this is my tier list and my opinions on these characters. It's fine if you guys have a different opinion, but... I'm going with my gut here. Just to be clear, besides the Fantastic Beasts characters, I am going with the book version of the characters, not the movie versions. There are big differences. That being said though, as always, I will be using footage from the movies just to make the video more visually pleasing for you guys. Before we really dive into it though, I want to thank today's sponsor, Established Titles. This is a really cool company because they allowed me to have the same title as my favorite character in the Harry Potter series, Lord Voldemort. I am now Lord Morgan. How did I do it? I'm glad you asked. Established Titles is based on a historic Scottish custom where landowners are referred to as lairds or in English, lords or ladies. The company allows you to buy as little as one square foot of land and because you own that land, you automatically become a lord or a lady. And something really cool, the first 200 people to use my link will get a plot next to me, so you can say that you're neighbors with Movie Flame. Each certificate features a unique plot number, which allows you to see the exact location of your land. And this not only makes you look like a boss to your friends and family, but it also helps with global reforestation efforts. Established Titles works with local charities like One Tree Planted and Trees for the Future, and they plant a tree with every single order. So clearly, it's a fun way to help preserve the picturesque woodlands of Scotland. And you don't have to get it for yourself. I not only made myself a lord, but I got one for my fiance Kara, and she said it was one of the coolest and most unique gifts she's ever gotten. With this purchase, you can officially change your name, meaning you can put lord or lady on your credit card, your plane ticket, heck, you could even put it on your dating profile. What a conversation starter that would be. Established Titles is actually running a massive sale right now. Plus, if you use code FLAME10, you get an additional 10% off. Go to EstablishedTitles.com slash Flame10 to become a Lord or a Lady today. Now that I've said that, let's get the video started. So I've made six tiers. The best, which are the characters that I love the most. Then really good, which are characters that are great but just barely miss being the best. Then good, which means they're better than average. After that, okay, which is just average. Bad is for characters that I don't like, and throw it out is for the worst of the worst. By the way, this is not based on the character's evilness, because honestly, some of the most evil characters are pretty high up for me. Also, I didn't know what order to put these characters in, so I just did it in alphabetical order based on their first name. Now, let's get into it. Albus Dumbledore. I'm gonna piss a lot of people off with this one, but I don't care. I'm going to put him in the bad tier. Yeah, hot take, I know. If I'm being honest, Dumbledore rubs me the wrong way. He's obviously this amazing guy and he did so many amazing things, but when you dig deeper, he is not the best person. He made plans to take over the Wizarding World and rule over Muggles. Sure, he changed his mind and sure he was young, but as Harry said while on their mission to find the Horcruxes, Dumbledore was their age at the time, and they were out saving the world, not planning to take it over. And let's not forget how much he manipulated Harry and Snape. He pulled their strings, lying repeatedly to both of them, especially to Snape, telling him that if he joined him, they would protect Lily's son, when really, it was the complete opposite. You've kept him alive so he can die at the proper moment. You've been raising him like a pig for slaughter. So yeah, I don't really like Dumbledore. I think he definitely deserves to be in the bad tier. Arthur Weasley. I'm gonna put Arthur Weasley in the good tier. He's just a bit above average for me. He's a great dad, a bit of a kook when it comes to muggles, which I love, and he's a good guy, but that's pretty much it for me. He doesn't go past the good tier in my eyes. Barty Crouch Jr. I'm gonna put Barty Jr. in the good tier because he is just a freaking psychopath and I love it. He's above average for me because he's so calculating, so smart, and absolutely crazy. He led us to one of the most shocking moments in the series, if you ask me. After Crouch Sr., his father had been missing, we found out that Barty Jr. killed him, transfigured him into a bone, and buried him outside of Hagrid's hut where no one could find him. That might have been the best answer to any mystery throughout the entire series. Bellatrix Lestrange 
I love Bellatrix, and I'm putting her in the really good tier. Her evil ways just intrigue me so much. She's a character that you love to hate, and sometimes I even found myself saying, yes, do more, keep blowing stuff up, keep egging Harry on. It makes for such a great read. Cho Chang. I'm going to put Cho in the okay tier. She's just average for me. I feel like a lot of people would put her in the bad tier, but I'm not going to do that. In the future, I plan on making a video about Cho, but for now, I'll say this. She's not as bad as everybody says. Sure, she sort of broke Harry's heart, and the movies might have made people view her worse as she was the one to give up Dumbledore's army there. Well, in the book, she didn't do that. It was her friend Marietta. But anyway, I think Cho is an average character for me. She's not bad, but she's not good, so she's going in the okay tier. Cornelius Fudge. Fudge is an idiot, plain and simple. He's going in the bad tier. He trashed Harry and Dumbledore for a whole year, telling everyone they were wrong, discrediting them any way he could, and altering the public's view of them. He's not in the bottom tier though, and that's because, as I said, he's just stupid. He doesn't suck because he's evil, he sucks because he's just misguided. He thinks that what he's doing is the right thing to do, and he's incredibly deluded, insecure, and very, very idiotic. Delphi Diggory or Delphi Riddle. Delphi is going in the throw it out tier. Throw out both her character and the book that created her. The Cursed Child never should have been written and neither should Delphi's character. Dolores Umbridge. Another one that's going in the throw it out tier. She's so hated that people really think she's worse than Voldemort. Morally, she is not. But when I think about who I have more hatred for, it's 100% Umbridge. She infuriated me the first time I read the fifth book, and she only got worse in the seventh. I think I might hate her more than any other character in the series, and that's saying something. Draco Malfoy. Another hot take. Malfoy sucks, and the only reason people like him is because Tom Felton is hot. Simple as that. He's going in the bad tier. If there were no movies, meaning we only knew Malfoy on the page, he would not get as much sympathy as he gets now. Like Umbridge, he continuously infuriates me throughout the series, and just because he stopped Crab from cursing the trio doesn't make up for all of the other things he's done. I'll be honest, in the movies I see it, Tom Felton is a dreamboat, but in the books, I have no sympathy for Draco. The only reason he isn't in the bottom tier is because he had a nice wrap up in the epilogue. Dudley Dursley. I'm putting Dudley in the okay tier. Dudley would probably be in most people's bad tier, but I actually like Dudley in the end. He had a much better redemption arc than Draco did, and it only took eight words to do so. I don't think you're a waste of space. He stopped bullying Harry almost two and a half years before the series wrapped up, and he had some genuine acts of kindness like leaving tea outside of Harry's door and being genuinely worried about Harry's safety before leaving him. And for those of you asking how I could put Dudley above Draco, Draco didn't go out of his way to do something nice for Harry. The most he did was stop people from killing him, but that wasn't for Harry's sake, but because he was too cowardly to pick a side. In the earlier books, Dudley probably would have been in the bad tier, but in the later books, I'd put him in the good tier, so that evens out to be in the okay tier. Fenrir Greyback. As I said, this video is not based on the character's evilness. It's based on how fun they are to read. I'm putting Greyback in the good tier, meaning he's above average. Greyback is 10 times more evil than Voldemort and Bellatrix combined, and every time he's mentioned, I just hang on to his every word, each one terrifying me. I've also never heard of a werewolf that got such a taste for human flesh that they started biting and clawing at people when they weren't even in their werewolf form. That's so original, and that fact alone makes him an interesting character that belongs in the good tier. Fred and George Weasley Fred and George are so likable. They bring so much comic relief to the series, and for that, they have to be in the best tier. Everything from their pranks, to their joke shop, and just their hilarious dialogue. He's not Fred, I am. Honestly, woman, you call yourself our mother. Oh, I'm sorry, George. They're in the elite for Harry Potter characters. Gellert Grindelwald. Like Greyback, watching Grindelwald do his thing is so fun despite his evilness. So I'm putting him in the good tier, meaning he's above average. Besides his antics, though, what makes him intriguing are his lines of morality. 
There's a clear line that he won't cross, and in the end, he has perhaps the best redemption arc in the whole series. When Voldemort comes to him, he refuses to tell the Dark Lord where the Elder Wand is, and dies to protect Dumbledore. The movies of course change this and sort of ruin his redemption arc as he was just like, yeah, Voldemort, it, it's with Dumbledore, go get it. <laughs> but as I said, this is based on the books, not the novels, so we're just gonna ignore that. Gilderoy Lockhart I'm putting Lockhart in the okay tier, meaning he's average. I know a lot of people might put him in the bad tier, but I really enjoyed reading him. He's so self-obsessed that it's funny. Every time he makes a comment about himself, it makes me laugh. I didn't get rid of the band and banshee by smiling at <laughs> That being said though, he does annoy me at times, which is why despite being fun to read, he doesn't quite make the good tier. I'm keeping him at average. Ginny Weasley I'm putting Ginny in the really good tier. I absolutely love her character, in the books at least, in the film she kinda sucks. She likes. But we see her grow so much throughout the books as she goes from being Ron's shy little sister to turning into this beautiful, popular, confident, and very secure woman by the end of the series. She's a character that always stands out to me and she belongs in the really good tier and she just barely misses the best tier. I think there are some other characters that are above her. Harry Potter. Another hot take incoming. I would put Harry in the okay tier, meaning he's just average. The reason Harry is so low is because he can sometimes be really annoying for me. He has a serious hero complex that often infuriates me. He could have come in first place in the second task of the Triwizard Tournament by a mile, but he of course had to save everyone, which even Hermione rolled her eyes at. But the hero complex can be even more serious, as it often leads himself and others to danger. It's what brought him to the Department of Mysteries, which led to his friends getting hurt and led to his godfather dying. I'm also doing a reread of the series right now, and I've realized that Harry doesn't really have that many opinions of his own. Most of the time, Rowling just has him sit there not saying a word, just listening to what others' opinions are. I like him, and I'm glad we follow him, but he just doesn't stand out that much compared to other characters in the series. At least not to me anyway, and this is my tier list, so... Hermione Granger. Yet another hot take incoming. I don't like Hermione the way others do, because other people seem to idolize her. I'm putting her in the okay tier, meaning she's just average. I know I said I'm basing this on the books and not the movies, but I can't deny that the movies might be part of the reason why I dislike her. The movies made her this perfect character who's brave and always right, but they do this by taking amazing moments away from other characters, specifically Ron. Even without the films though, I don't really like her. She's a know-it-all and she gets under my skin more than most characters in the series. I already know that a lot of people are going to disagree with me on this, but I think that the people who would disagree with me are swayed by Emma Watson's performance of Hermione. Like Tom Felton as Draco, Emma Watson made Hermione this elite and beautiful girl, almost like what Ginny was in the books and was supposed to be in the movies, but they sort of dropped the ball on that one. But for Hermione in the novels, unlike Emma Watson, she was actually really unattractive and sort of annoying to most characters she interacted with. She's also a more in-your-face know-it-all in the books rather than a very smart and always right character in the films. James Potter James Potter is an absolute bully. I'm putting him in the bad tier. He tormented Snape and others for no reason other than being bored. He did and said some awful things, and in the end, he was rewarded by getting the girl. I know he changed as he got more mature, but that doesn't excuse what he did. He belongs in the bad tier. Lily Potter I'm putting Lily in the okay tier, which might surprise some people because I've seen people put her in the very top tier. Lily is seen as the saint throughout the series, but the reason why I put her as just average is because of one moment that made me lose a lot of respect for Lily. The moment I'm referring to is when she literally laughed as James flips Snape over to show his underwear to the whole crowd. It's a small moment, but it shows her true colors, and it actually explains why she fell for James in the end. This moment shows us that she didn't entirely hate his bullying ways the way most people make it out to be. That being said though, she was so brave for giving her life to save her son, which definitely pushed her up a tier. Lord Voldemort. Again, another hot take incoming. Voldemort is the best character in the whole series and he's going in the best tier. 
I know I'm probably alone with this statement, but Voldemort is my favorite character in the whole series. Huh, I sort of have a pattern of enjoying evil and narcissistic characters, don't I? I guess I just enjoy the chaos they bring. But anyway, Voldemort's backstory is what intrigues me to his character so much. I find his past so fascinating, and those flashbacks were a big part of why The Half-Blood Prince is my favorite book in the series. So Voldemort is the third character to clinch the top tier. Luna Lovegood it won't take long to see another character clinch the top tier though, because Luna Lovegood is also going into the best. I feel like a lot of people would agree with this one, because she's just so likable. Everything about her is so out of the box and weird, but in such a special and unique way. Mad-Eye Moody Moody is just okay for me, so I'm placing him to be mixed with the other average characters. While making this, I was like, I really liked Moody in the fourth book. But then I remembered that was Barty Crouch Jr., who I've already shown I have a liking for. The real Moody is sort of boring if you ask me. At least he was during the course of the seven books. He had a more exciting past, but we don't know too much about that. So he's just going to be ranked as an average character for me. Marvolo gone. I'm going to put Marvolo in the throw it out tier. He's extremely arrogant when he has no reason to be, literally being poor, all of the money from his once esteemed family having dried out years before his time. But the thing that really puts him in the bottom tier was his treatment of his daughter Merope. He abused her both physically and mentally to the point that he repressed her magical abilities. And after treating her so poorly, he expected her to be waiting at home for him with a freshly cooked meal when he returned from Azkaban. What a piece of shit. Merope gone. Merope will also have to go on the throw it out tier. Although she was a victim, which I just went over when going over her father Marvolo, she was still an awful person, maybe even worse than Marvolo. And let me explain. She put Tom Riddle Sr. under a love potion, forced him to make love with her when he clearly would not have done that without the love potion, forced him to impregnate her and have a child with her, and expected him to stay when she stopped giving him the love potion. Merope basically date raped Tom Riddle Sr. for years. Years. Not just hours like a normal date rape drug, for years. I don't even want to know how many times he was forced to do it with her, but it's a scary thought that really just makes me realize Merope belongs in the trash. She is going in the throw it out tier. Minerva McGonagall. Minerva has to be placed in the really good tier. Her character is just so likable. And if you're asking why she's not in the top tier, it's because she can be pretty harsh on the heroes of the story at times, like the time she took 150 points away from Gryffindor in one night. And that's why she's in the really good tier. Molly Weasley. I'm putting Molly in the good tier. Molly is a great mother and a great person in general. But again, if you're wondering why she's not higher, it's because I didn't like the way she treated the twins at times. She crushed their dreams of opening a joke shop, put them down with her words, showed that she had no faith in them, unfairly compared them to their brothers, and of course destroyed all of the joke merchandise they had spent over a year developing. She had no faith in them and never supported them until they went behind their back and became successful. I think that pushes her down from the top two tiers, but she's still above average for me. Neville Longbottom. Neville is going in the best tier. He's probably my second favorite character in the series just behind Voldemort. Neville's transformation over the course of the series is one of the best parts of the books. Watching him grow made me fall in love with his character, and when he was out there kicking ass during the Battle of Hogwarts, it was something really special. He is in the elite of Harry Potter characters and definitely deserves to be in the best. Nymphadora Tonks. Tonks is cool, but she never really stood out for me, so I'm going to put her in the okay tier. She's just an average character. Percy Weasley. Percy is going in the bad tier. He was a know-it-all and a self-obsessed show-off in the first four books. Then in the fifth book, he turned on his family, told his father he had no ambition and that was why he was poor, slammed the door in his mother's face when she came to talk to him, took the side of Fudge in the ministry over his own blood and friends, praised Dolores Umbridge for what she was doing at Hogwarts, and told Ron to stay away from the unstable Harry. The only reason he isn't in the bottom tier is because of the apology at the end, which some might call a redemption and might make some people put him as average in the okay tier. But no, it's gonna take a lot more than that little apology to make up for all the stuff he did in my eyes. Peter Pettigrew. Wormtail is the worst character in the entire series. I hate him, everybody else hates him, all the characters in the series hate him, both good and bad. He just sucks. He's a coward, a traitor, a murderer, and is absolutely pathetic. 
He betrayed his best friends, knowing that they would most likely die, and for sure knew that their one-year-old baby would die. Then he framed his other best friend, sitting back and letting him rot in prison for what he thought was a life sentence, and he helped bring Voldemort back. He belongs in the trash. Put him in the throw-it-out tier. Petunia Dursley Petunia might be in many people's bad tier, but I'm going to put her in the okay tier. Sure, she sucked at times, which definitely made her go lower on the ranking, but when it comes down to it, she was a tragic character. All she wanted was to be a witch like Lily and to go to Hogwarts with her younger sister, who she was actually really close with before the jealousy was brought forth. She also took in Harry, knowing it would protect him due to his sister's sacrifice, Petunia ensuring that Lily did not die in vain. And even at her lowest point with Harry, after Dumbledore reminded her of how she was protecting him, she went against her husband, who she always sided with, and said Harry was to stay. But her final act was the thing that really made her be ranked here. We found out that she saved the blanket Harry was wrapped in when he arrived at her doorstep, and she left it to him in her will. I think she definitely earned this spot. She deserves to be in the okay tier. Remus Lupin Lupin is so likable, he has to be in the really good tier. He helped Harry grow so much as his teacher, and he was always the voice of reason, first for the Marauders when they were kids, then for Harry, then for Sirius when he was cooped up, and even for the Order of the Phoenix in general. The only reason he is not in the top tier is because of the way he ran out on the pregnant Tonks. He of course found his way back though, and I think all Harry Potter fans wish that we could have seen him raise his own son Teddy. Rita Skeeter Rita is going in the bad tier. She was just awful in the fourth book, but the reason I didn't put her in the bottom tier is because she wrote Harry's story in the fifth book, which changed the Wizarding World's perception of the boy who lived. Of course, she was blackmailed by Hermione to do so, but she still did it nonetheless. Ron Weasley Ron has some great qualities, and he's definitely a great character, but I do have some serious problems with him. As much as I don't want to slander Ron because the movies did that enough, looking at the books, he's not the best person. He's had some crazy irrational fights where he was completely wrong with both Harry and Hermione. With Harry, it was about putting his name in the Goblet of Fire, and with Hermione, it was about Crookshanks eating scabbers. He's also not the nicest person, as he makes fun of Luna, Hermione at times, and a few other people scattered throughout the books as well. Taking all of that into account, he comes in as just an average character for me, so he's going to be placed in the okay tier. Also, this is crazy. Before making this, I did not expect that the trio would all be just average. But I guess when I really thought about their characters, none of them are really that great, especially compared to the surrounding cast around them. Rubius Hagrid Hagrid is above average, I think, meaning I'm going to put him in the good tier. He misses the really good tier, though, because he sometimes gets on my nerves with his dangerous magical creatures. They cause him to make bad decisions that put other people in danger. But he also has such a big heart, especially for those close to him, which makes him very likable and makes me put him in the good tier. Sirius Black Sirius is going in the bad tier. He is not a good person whatsoever. He not only bullied people alongside James because he was bored, but he took it a step farther, almost getting Snape killed by Lupin in his werewolf form with a joke of a prank. And later on in life, in the books anyway, he was just not a good godfather to Harry, especially in the fifth book. He was a lot better in the films, but again, this is based on the novels. Every time Harry needed him in the fifth book, he made Harry feel worse than he already did. And I will give him some slack for being cooped up at Grimmauld Place, which is why he's not in the throw it out tier. But still, he can do better. Sirius was just not a nice person starting from a very young age and going until his eventual death. Severus Snape Snape is going in the bad tier as well. He had a great redemption, but I still despise Snape. He might have stopped working for Voldemort, but he was still a vile person. He bullied kids for no reason, especially Harry and Neville, to the point where he was Neville's greatest fear. He was going to kill Neville's toad if Neville didn't make his potion right. He harassed Harry, Neville, Ron, Hermione, not to mention every other Gryffindor. And let me remind you, this is a grown man. A grown man who is bullying his students who most of the time did nothing wrong. Also, his obsession with Lily is just creepy. We have to talk about it. Snape and Lily never had anything romantic, and they had been growing apart as friends for the last five years at Hogwarts. Then, after he called Lily a racial slur, the literal worst thing he could call her, she rejected him in their fifth year, meaning they were about 15 or 16. Most people would have just moved on, but his obsession with her continued as he still loved her, a feeling that Lily never even came close to feeling years and years after that rejection. Then they never spoke again after that, and his obsession still continued. This is not a love story. 
This is a story about an obsessed stalker. The only reason Snape is not in the bottom tier is because of his redemption to protect Harry for all those years. Vernon Dursley. I'm putting Vernon in the throw it out tier. He was awful to Harry for years, treated him terribly, and unlike Petunia and Dudley, he never had a redemption and he never had a tragic backstory that explained why he was the way he was. He was just a jerk for no reason. He never said he was sorry to Harry, never felt any remorse. He was just a terrible person obsessed with himself. And there's my tier list. There are some hot takes in there that many might disagree with, but I gave you my reasons on why I felt the way I did. And ultimately, it's my list, so... With the nature of my job and just being a huge Harry Potter fan, I've spent a lot of time with these characters, and clearly in that time I've formed some pretty strong biases whether good or bad, but it was definitely fun to share my thoughts. I had a lot of fun making this one, and I hope you guys enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed making it. That's all I have for you guys today, so I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. You can follow me on Instagram to see more of my personal life like my cute dog Loki and some behind the scenes movie flame stuff. I also do similar content on TikTok and Twitter that I do here on this channel, so if you like what I do here, check them out. All the handles are right below me and links are in the description. Over here are my wonderful patrons. If you want to be featured on the next video plus get a few other perks, become a patron today. As always, if you liked the video, hit that like button and subscribe and look out for more great movie flame videos on the way.